It might surprise you that the first step to automate your nucleic acid extraction isn't programming a robot. Instead, the first steps are to establish the requirements and controls for your extraction workflow, including the quality of the extracted nucleic acid and the throughput rate for your samples. Then, you'll need to establish a manual magnetic particle-based nucleic acid extraction process that meets or exceeds your quality standards. Let's start with determining the requirements for your nucleic acid extraction. In general, you'll want high purity. Contaminants can inhibit downstream steps like PCR. You'll also want acceptable recovery or yield, and a workflow that meets required processing times. Finally, you'll want acceptable volumes of eluted nucleic acid samples and no cross-contamination of samples. The precise thresholds for each requirement will depend on your application. Before working with a robot, you must develop a manual extraction method that meets and exceeds your requirements. An automated extraction may be more consistent and have higher throughput, but final yields and purity will rarely be better than what you can achieve manually. If you struggle to get high yields and purity from a manual method that uses the same reagents as your planned automation, the automated method will be worse. There are too many variables to control if you attempt to optimize extraction, chemistry, and robotics at the same time. A manual extraction method that works well will be a vital control for optimizing your automated workflow. So let's talk about developing a manual method for nucleic acid extraction. Remember that the general steps in a magnetic particle-based extraction are lice, bind, wash and dry, rehydrate and elute. You'll manually optimize these steps using the same magnetic bead-based reagents or extraction kit that you intend to use for the automated workflow. Use pipettes and a magnet to manipulate the liquids and magnetic particles. You should develop the manual method using your intended sample type. You need to know how the sample components affect the extraction. However, there are simpler sample types you can use to help troubleshoot your extraction. Starting with purified DNA, such as a DNA ladder or purified genomic DNA, can reveal if your method leads to inadequate yields or introduces impurities. The effect of cellular debris and sample matrix is removed as a variable. Cell cultures like HeLa cells can also be a valuable test system because you can control the number of cells added. These models are useful, but you shouldn't optimize your entire method with them. Run them in parallel or as needed to troubleshoot a specific step. If these simple model systems are failing to meet your requirements, then a complex matrix like blood will fail. As you optimize your manual method, there are three questions to ask yourself. One, did the nucleic acids bind completely to the magnetic particle? Nucleic acids need enough time to bump into the magnetic particles, also referred to as magnetic beads. To make sure you have enough mixing time and intensity in your manual method, it's typically enough to mix the bead suspension by pipetting a few times and mixing with a rotator or vortex for about 10 minutes. The manufacturer of the extraction kit may also have suggested mixing times and methods. Make sure the beads remain visibly suspended. Two, were the beads washed sufficiently? Magnetic beads tend to aggregate when biologic materials are present. Unless the beads are fully resuspended and dispersed during wash steps, proteins and other contaminants will be trapped in the aggregates. Use pipetting to resuspend beads during wash steps. Watch to make sure the beads fully disperse. At that point, the wash should be done. For your manual method, make sure to change tubes after washing steps. Salts from the extraction reagents can get trapped in the cap and edges and will reduce sample purity. This won't be a problem for your automated method. Three, were the beads dried properly? Different magnetic particles can have unique properties, so follow the drying times recommended by the particle manufacturer. If instruction is not clear, then room temperature drying for approximately 20 to 30 minutes is a great starting point. If your beads are not sufficiently dried, Residual alcohol from wash steps won't be removed. Alcohols can reduce recovery of the nucleic acid and are a contaminant. If your beads are dried for too long, the nucleic acids can be hard to rehydrate and elute. You'll have very low recovery. Let's recap. Before you ever create an automated nucleic acid extraction workflow on a robot, you must define your performance standards and optimize a manual method that meets those standards. This upfront work will show you how your sample behaves during the extraction workflow and what steps could also be challenging with a robot.
you'll have a set of controls to compare to the performance of an automated workflow. Being able to quickly identify failure points of an automated workflow can save you days or weeks of work. Now that you have established your project requirements and understand the importance of having a manual method for magnetic particle-based nucleic acid extraction, let's talk about robotics. If you have any questions or need help with your own automation workflow, our team of field support scientists are ready to help. Learn more about this free service at promega.com.